Hey guys, quick video today to show how to use some aftermarket skid shoes on your John Deere Model 49 snow thrower. Uh, make a long story short, we've had an easy winter here in New York this year, uh, at least where I am. Uh, I've only needed to use the machine once, and uh, that was last weekend. Took it out, cleared my driveway, and noticed that my snow thrower um, edge, cutting edge, kept getting stuck. And you know, you'd be going along and it catches the driveway and the whole whole snow thrower wants to bend up in the frame, which is not good. Uh, so I thought to myself, I've got a skid shoe problem here, either terrible adjustment or I'm really, really out of, uh, out of the wear specifications. So I put it back in the shop and the latter was true. Uh, my shoes look like they should have been replaced a long time ago. I had no issues at all last year. Um, but I think I just got lucky. So this video is really talk about how bad the old ones were, show you the replacements that I got, and a little bit about uh, kind of get a universal fit skid shoe on a, uh, on a Model 49. So not really complicated, but let's go take a look. All right, so here we are looking at my uh, 318 set up for snow moving. I use this for two things. I mow with it in the, uh, in the spring and the summer, and I move snow with it in the winter, and I use my 420 for everything else. I've got the John Deere cab on there, which is pretty cool. I've got my Model 49. I've got the uh, hydro blower conversion uh, that I made, which is pretty cool. And then, uh, yeah, this machine really works out great. So again, back to my problem. If you take a look, you can see there ain't much left to that skid shoe. Um, front part's gone, broken off. You know, it's actually adjusted correctly when I take a look at the cutting edge, but there really isn't too much left of it. So obviously this is not a matter of adjustment. It's a matter of replacing those shoes. Let's take a look at what we've got. All right, here we are on my bench with what's left of the right hand shoe. You can see only got a little bit of the actual shoe part left on the back. The front is long gone. Been riding on that a little bit. You can see it's well worn down. So I can't believe that A, I didn't notice this last year, or B, that I've been so successful in using these things in the interim. In any case, went out and bought some new ones. Take a look at that difference. These are from a company called PM Fabrication. This is some heavy duty stuff. Quarter inch steel, pretty sure that's powder coated. Absolutely no comparison in terms of quality. These were reasonably expensive. I think they were about, I don't know, 50 or $60 before, uh, before I had them shipped to me. You know, certainly less than 70 altogether. They're more than likely gonna last me the life of their machine, I would guess. Just taking a look at the quality of the construction here. And I am sure we're gonna have a much better snow moving experience. So I'm gonna get these mounted up and uh, we'll take a look when we're done. So none of this is ever as easy as it looks, right? So I took off the, uh, the cover for the, for the drive gears and the chain here in order to get the old shoe off on the left-hand side. And I've got the new one on. And of course, all of these machines have their little idiosyncrasies. Mine in the front here is curled around a little bit. I'm not gonna fool with that right now. But putting the new show, shoe on there, first of all, it has to fit behind the sprocket because it's taller. And if I put the front bolt in, I end up with my cutting edge, cutting edge uh, you know, too high off the ground. It's probably three eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna run it with just the two. This is the adjustment that I want for the time being. And then uh, maybe in the springtime, when I go over and clean this thing up, I'll see if I can straighten that out a little bit. I will take the opportunity of lubricating this chain a little bit while I'm in here. And I did notice the clearance now between the chain and that plate is gonna be a little bit tight. Um, I'm guessing again in the springtime I might machine that down a little bit to get some more clearance, uh, but for now we're good. So here we are on the right hand side, and of course this can't be a two minute job either because we've got a nice little bend in the bottom of the snow thrower housing there. So I'm going to just see if I can, without breaking out a torch, bend that back a little bit and get this thing on there. All right, so here we are with side two mounted. So I tried to bend in that front corner a little bit, but it's, it's too far curled around and 
this also might be an issue where these shoes, which are really designed to be universal, might just not be the perfect universal fit for this particular snow thrower. You can see, I went in, I wouldn't recommend you do this, but I cut off a small corner of the curved around piece anyway. At some point, I'm gonna clean that up. Of course, I painted the edge to make sure it doesn't rust. Here we end up on this side. We've got all three bolts in this time. And that is a tremendous improvement over what I had before. I've got it adjusted, so I've got maybe an eighth of an inch clearance between the cutting edge and the, uh, and the ground here, which is really the way I like it. I think these are gonna work out really well. Hey everybody, so we're all set here. Uh, could have named this video how to turn a 15 minute job into a one hour job. Obviously I had to do a little fooling around on both sides to get these things connected. Uh, I think they're designed to be a universal fit and as a result of that I think you should really expect to be able to make a little change here or there. Maybe if your Model 49 is straighter than mine you wouldn't have to do the couple of little tweaks that I did. But I'm really happy with it. I think the performance is going to be fantastic. So that's about it for today.